Amen. Amen. Thank God for those that are joining with us on tonight as we uh, coming to you, uh, speaking on God's word tonight. You know, this is our Wednesday night Bible study. We call it Wednesday night impact. So we want to come tonight and share a word with you tonight and share God's word with you on tonight. And I believe that the Lord, amen, will bless you if you hear what the word, amen, has to say over our lives and how God continues, amen, to show us through his word the things, amen, that he wants uh, saints to be aware of. I pray tonight that when those that are sharing this live that you were sharing, and come on in, come on, come on in. We want to take it, man. We're not going to be long, but we do want to share a word tonight with you that I believe that as believers that we have to become more aware of, uh, of the plans of the enemy. We, we often don't talk about the devil the way we ought to. I know we got all our enemies. We got all of the people that we want uh, to say that they're against us or we're against them, but there is a devil that we have to be more careful, amen, not to, uh, to, to to dismiss in our lives. There's a devil that is trying to come against you and to come against me. And as the church, we got to be, once again, more discerning, more sharper with the things that we have against uh, the, the, the things of, 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 of the enemy. The weapons that the enemy uses. Sometimes we're using all kinds of, amen, metaphors for, for, for our friends and our families. But there is a devil that is using all kinds of devices to come against God's people. So we want to share it tonight. I pray that once again that we would come hearing God's word, being excited about it. I'm excited about it because I believe that anytime God gives us something, we should share it. And we should, amen, be inspired to go after what God says and not to go after, amen, what the enemy of this flesh says or what the enemy says. Come on, share with me tonight, amen, share with someone tonight, amen, come into the word of the Lord. We're not going to be long, but I want to share this with you tonight because we have to go after, amen, a devil and demons that have been released over God's people, over our minds and our hearts. And God wants us to get it back. We got to go back to the word of the Lord, amen. So let's pray. As we pray, I believe that God's going to, amen, share, amen, once again, understanding and wisdom. The Bible says, in all thy getting, get an understanding. And I believe God's just doing just that right there. Amen. Let's pray. Father, thank you tonight, Lord, that as we come tonight to hear your holy word, God, you'll speak to us, God, through the power of the Holy Spirit to give us wisdom and to give us knowledge and to give us understanding. God, as we come tonight, we believe tonight, Lord God, that, Lord, that you will speak to your people tonight. And, Father, that when Whatever the devil, Lord God, has tried to bind, oh God, over the minds and hearts of your people, over the church. Father God, we pray that it be released tonight, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, someone may be going through, Lord God, difficulties, Lord God, in their home, Lord God, may be going through sickness in their body. Father God, may be going through, Lord God, Father God, finance, Lord God, struggles. But God, tonight, I pray that you would, Lord God, send a blessing, Lord God, their way, a miracle, Lord God, Father God, that, Lord, that they can see, Lord God, that you are the God that can provide all of our needs according to your riches and glory which is in christ jesus this is the prayer that we pray and we believe it now in jesus name amen and amen we have to amen go into the word of the lord i'm not going to stay long tonight but i want to share with you tonight once again excuse us for our time but uh you know I'm, I'm trying to do this on my own at times but thank god once again we're getting better we're getting better thank god that i'm at home and i'm able to share god's word with you so i pray that you would amen be blessed pray for us amen we need uh you know prayer we're doing what we can do we're doing with to the best of our ability but we believe god that once again, that God, amen, says faith without works is dead. So we're working uh, the good work of the Lord, amen, to give him the praise. But I want to speak tonight, once again, on the spirit that the enemy, the devil, is sending out to God's people. And it could be, amen, something that we need to learn how to identify. We need to learn how to identify these spirits. We need to learn, once again, how to come against these spirits. We need to learn, once again, that these things are the things of the, of, of, of the devil. Come on, I said the devil. Come on, not your sister, not your brother. But these are the devices of the devil. The enemy is setting up God's people for a downfall but i want to say man to be strong once again to understand come on somebody that once again you can't tell a counterfeit huh un, 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 unless amen you really know what the authentic thing look like you can't tell what looks counterfeit and the that and the bible tells us amen that the enemy comes as a deceiver 
I believe, amen, throughout this pandemic, oh, so many families have broken up. So many things, amen, have been discouraged, amen, over the hearts and minds of people. People stopped talking to one another. People all of a sudden got, hey, hey, they, they got, got problems one with another, family members and co-workers and friends, even people in the church. Come on, have lost, amen, their faith in God, have lost their zeal in God, have lost, amen, understanding, and all of a sudden, now we're, we're, we're against uh, one, one another. But that's the spirit of the devil. That's the spirit of the devil. And we have to come in now and be able to remove, amen, the devil's, amen, what, opportunity to come against God's people. Come on. The Bible says, amen, with love and kindness have I drawn thee. And we got to make sure that we go back to God. And do the things that God, once again, is calling us to do. I want to go into the Bible. I'm in 1 Samuel tonight. I'm in 1 Samuel tonight in chapter 18. The Lord laid this in my spirit once again. And I said, Lord, what are we going to speak about? The Lord laid it in my spirit because I've been talking about, once again, the spirits of the devil that has been released to the churches. That has been released once again. And we have to learn how, amen, we were brought up to do. To do what? To cast down these devils. To come against what these devils, once again, is trying to do. I'm not talking about your sister or your brother. Stop it. I'm not talking about them. I am talking about the devil himself and his demons and his imps. Come on. He don't need our help. Come on. But he'll use it. But he doesn't need our help because, once again, the Bible says, amen, that, once again, that there's a spiritual warfare going on now in the spirit realm. And the devil has sent out, once again, spirits. Sent by what? By the enemies. Amen. Come on. Come on. Spiritual wickedness, principalities, rulers of darkness in high places. And we have to be able now, once again, to identify it. Come on. Do what? Do the word of God and do the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 18. I'm going to read, amen, uh, just from, I'm sorry, at verse number six. The Bible said, as they came, when David returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, the woman came out. Of all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with what with the tamarinds, with joy, with instruments of uh, with instruments of music. The women sang one to another as they played and, and said, Saul has slain his thousand, and David his ten thousand. Saul was very angry. And this saying displeased him. He said, They have credited David with the ten thousand, they have only credited me with a thousand, with the thousand. What can he have what what can he have more but the kingdom? Saul watched David from that day forward. On the next day, an evil spirit from God came mighty on Saul, and he prophesied in the middle of the house. David played with his hand, and as he did, day by day, Saul had a spear in his hand. And Saul threw the spear, for he said, I will pin David to the wall. David escaped from his presence twice. I want to speak about, once again, the spirits, okay, of the devil. The things that the devil sends into the church. Now, we all know, once again, that, uh, uh, that, that, that there are spirits being released. And I know, once again, we love to come against one another. We love to say it's us. We love to say it's us that's coming. But there is a spirit of the enemy that is being released now into the minds and hearts of God's children and of God's people. Da we, we understand that David now, once again, has been the, the, the prophesied, the promised new king. And he's in Saul's south. Saul has become once again what we what we would consider now to be okay to to be very arrogant. Saul has has defied God several times. So he's defied God several times. Remember, the people have asked for Saul. The people asked for Saul. They asked for a king, and God gave gave them Saul, one that what that that is that that, that had the spirit of the people. He had the spirit of the people. And God gives them Saul. That's not God's choice, but God gives them Saul. So what happens is, is because now Saul, once again, is, is, is made king. Saul is told to do something by God. When God accredits us, when God gives us credit, gives us a position, gives us entitlement, gives us blessings that we don't deserve, once again, it is accredited to us. It is credited. It's like anybody that understands me tonight, that when you get credit, once again, it is simply because somebody is giving you something that you didn't necessarily deserve, but they're going to take a chance on you. People of God, God took a chance on you and I tonight. 
God took a chance on us tonight that when he gave Jesus as a man, uh, uh, as, as our savior, as he gave Jesus as a ransom for our sin, God gave us credit that we would learn how to what? How to be obedient to him, how to trust him, how to love him, and how to do what? How to serve him. The Bible says, amen, because he gives Saul this credit and he gives Saul an assignment. He tells Saul what to do. Go and kill all the Amalekites. I'm not going to be long. Come on. I just want to share the word of God. He tells him to go and kill the Amalekites. Go and do what I told you to do. Go and kill that species off. Go and kill the Amalekites. Go and kill them off because what they have done before time passed. Go, I want you to go and kill it. See, this is why the, the saints, once again, we got to learn that there are some things inside of us that God, once again, is, is, is telling us that we have to learn how to kill off. These things have to be learned. These, these things have to be killed off, according to God. There, there's some things inside of us that, once again, that because God was a, gave us credit and gave us the grace and the mercy, oh, shout out, to follow behind him, there is now an opportunity, an assignment, for us to kill things off in us. And, and, and we know that Saul goes and he doesn't complete the job. Come on, he doesn't complete the job. He saves not only the king, but he saves some things and, and, and he defies what God says. The, these, are, the, these are doors that the enemy is going is gonna to work through us. Amen. When we, once again, we can see God's blessing. God has accredited us. Come on. But once again, we know that there are some things that should be done dying in us and we just don't come on believers come on come on tonight we know that we should not be stuck on just ourselves now god want us to kill things off in our lives so why so that the enemy will not be able to use it later on oh it didn't look like it was bad for saul it didn't look like it was that big of a deal and i know sometimes we, we believe that it don't look like that big of a deal but we gotta learn how to kill this spirit off of us because what? God's God accredited us. Come on. Somebody should say that right there. I'm, I thank God for the credit. So he, he gives him this opportunity. Puts him in a, in, a, in a rightful position. Makes him a king. Even though it is not to God's liking. Come on. But he gives him this opportunity. And what happens is Saul defies him. We don't see the spirit yet. But we see the defiant spirit. And so therefore now it becomes once again, something that's going to grow inside Saul. So Saul now goes once again and takes the opportunity to, to defy God. There, there's another time to where, once again, Saul is given another opportunity. And Saul is told to wait for Samuel the prophet. But Saul goes and does what? And does the sacrifice for himself. We can't sacrifice anything that is not of God. Anything that's not a, that, that is not ordained, we can't sacrifice because what we'll do, we'll bring in strange, come on, spirits now that is telling us to do, once again, what God has called what? The priest, the priest to do. So Saul defies God again. I'm talking about the spirit that's coming into the churches now because we got people that will do, once again, what they want to do and not be obedient to God. And we got to get to a point now to where we stop saying God told us to do these things. Come on. It's, it, it, it's embedded in us, amen, that we don't want to wait for nothing. Saul does not want to wait for nothing. And so therefore he defies God. Some of us got to understand on tonight, believers, that when God tells us to wait, we have to learn how to wait on God. Come on. When God tells us to wait, we have to wait on God. When God tells, see, we got to get back to the point where once again, we have to wait on God and we got to start allowing God's servants to do what God tells them to do. He was, he was supposed to wait on Samuel and Samuel gets there. The first time he tells them, did you do everything that God told you to do with the Amalekites? He said, so why is this? I hear the bleeding in my, in, in my ear. But now he tells him, because God already lets him know. He says, you did, you did a bad thing. You did a real bad thing. You, you, did, you messed up. People of God, we got to watch out for the spirit now. Come on. We got to watch out for this emotional, once again, this impatience. These are things that the enemy operates on. And the Bible says, amen, that God gives us a spirit of patience. 
But when we become impatient, oh, I'm going to do it my way. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it that way. That's the plans of the enemy. That's the devil. Come on, that's the devil. So because of this right here, now the Bible, amen, is clearly stating, amen, how God now is dealing with King Saul. Dealing with King Saul. He's found, he, he's, he's upset with him now. His credit has run out. And we got to be careful once again that our credit, thank God for grace, but what if Paul says, amen, according to the word, the apostle Paul says, shall we continue in sin? That grace may abide, credit, that grace may abide, God forbid. We got to start doing things according to God's word and according to the spirit of God, the spirit of excellence, the spirit of excellence. If there's an art between brothers and sisters, we ought to get it right. That's the spirit of excellence. We ought to love. That's the spirit of excellence in God. Anybody understand something about a, a, a nice, amen, a, a, a credit score? And I know, oh, I got a credit score of 500. Oh, I got a credit score of 600 and something. Oh, I got a seven. Oh, I got an eight. Oh, I'm, I got A1 credit. I got A1 credit. If we want to stay, once again, with good standing with God, come on. You know, you, what you do, you pay your debt. Come on, you pay your debt. You, you pay your debt. Th that's why they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. He says, uh, 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 he says, I want you to pray like this right here. Come on, that thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. And what? And forgive us our debt as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation. See, good credit is once again, is when we operate in the spirit of excellence. Come on, somebody ought to say that right there. Good credit with God is when we operate in the spirit of excellence. When we do wrong, we just repent and we just ask for forgiveness and we go before God and ask for it and instead of trying to justify our means. Saul is trying to justify everything. And these are the spirits, once again, that when as believers, when we don't ask for forgiveness, once again, we want to justify our means and say, it was God, well, here come... Here comes the devil. Here comes the devil. The devil's coming. Come on. The devil's coming. Because why? Because there is no repentance. And there's no access for forgiveness. So therefore, the credit score just begins to go down and down and down and down. And then we wind up in the basement. Come on, somebody. Now we're trying to use somebody else's name. Oh, come on. But the Bible says, amen, that what? We ought to owe no man. Owe no man. Our credit should be good with God. Our credit should be good with God. To so where once again we can go to God now and ask, as the Bible says, for whatsoever we will, and it will be given unto us. So the Bible says that because of this right here, now Saul's credit is no longer in good standing with God. But look at the spirits now that is coming upon him because the Bible says, because David is a servant. See, God is looking for servants now. Servants are going to have good credit with God. You remind, you remind yourself, David was in the backside, was in the backyard of his father's house doing his father's will. Come on, somebody. He's a servant. Servants are going to have good credit with God. I know it looked like, amen, oh, why are you doing it now? Oh, it looked like so much is going on and, and, and you, you, you just got too much going on. But servants is going to have good credit with God because they're doing the will and the work of the father. He's in the back of the house and, he, and he, he's doing his father's will. And when God sees him, God says, I have a man after my own heart. And it's, and it's in David. It's in, it's in David. And David, once again, is doing the will of God. And he's standing in good standing with God. That God says, I'm going to make him my king. I'm going to give him that right there. People of God, see, God will give us, come on, the credit of the king. And tell you to do what you want to do with it now. Because I'm blessing you. I want the credit of the king. Somebody say I want the credit of the king. I want the credit of the king. Huh? He said that when I seek ye first the kingdom of God. And his righteousness. Everything else to be added unto me. I want the credit of the king. But, is this, but, but look at what David. Look at what King Saul. Excuse me. Look at what King Saul is doing now. Because he comes back from battle with David. 
Look at he doesn't even he, he comes back from the battle with David and the women come out and they're coming out and they're and and, and they're they're celebrating and they're telling amen about the goodness of what God has done and they're saying, Look, David has killed his ten thousand, the saw his thousands. And the Bible says this angered, this angered King Saul. I want to know, amen, that that that, that, that do, do anybody can anybody accredit you with killing something in your life? Come on, that was trying to over, overtake you. Come on. There, there's some spirits that you got to learn how to kill in order to be a credit for. Everybody wants to be anointed, but there's got to be some spirits now that you have killed with inside of you that you can be a credited for. David is a killer. Huh? He is killed off a man. The Philistines, the Philistines know about him. The Philistines represent the flesh. And, and David is a killer of the Philistines. David knows how to do it, but the Bible says Saul, see, it's easy to kill off, once again, what you don't want. Hear me now. Hear me now. It's easy to kill off what you don't want. It's easy to kill off what you don't want. You, 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 it's, that's easy. But it's harder to kill something that you want, that you desire. And holding on to a lot of hatred and bitterness, amen, it's hard to kill those things. Because, once again, it may make you look smaller. But these are the things of the enemy. God tells Cain concerning Abel, once again, that you need to get away from that door. Because, once again, he, he was upset. He was angry. And, and, and because of this right here. See, look what happens. with Anger turned into rage. Because he goes after his brother. He goes after his brother. The same thing that Saul does now. Saw so, so, from, from being angry, then into rage. This is how the enemy operates. The enemy will, once again, he got angry, and then he went into a whole rage. You ever seen somebody just get into, amen, get angry, and then just go into a whole rage? And we got to be careful because that spirit now looks like it has hit the church. Everybody's in a rage. Everybody's angry. All upset. Don't want to take him in and, 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 and kill off that spirit. This spirit now that's hitting the church now because everybody is so upset. Oh, they're so upset and so annoyed and, and, and they feel like they was done so wrong. And because of this, because of this, Saul now, once again, his credit score don't went down with God. Come on, he's going to lose position. And look at what's happening now. Now the Bible says, once again, at night David is playing the harp. Because it's, it's soothing, once again, Saul, he loves it, once again, because God has what? Has released what? An evil spirit upon King Saul. Now, I thought about that, and I looked at it, and I reminded myself of what Jesus told Peter. Peter, I prayed for you. Watch this now. Because the enemy desired to have sipped you as wheat. In other words, the enemy came in requesting Peter but because he because Jesus prayed for him come on he gave him a credit gave him a credit because he prayed for him huh and since I prayed for you because the enemy would have sent you as we I remind amen ourselves that when God when when, when Satan goes in a and, and, and have the conversation with God when God says have you considered my servant Job and Satan says, come on, out of all of his substance and out of everything that you gave him, that's why he's praising you. But if you let me get at him, he'll curse you to your face and die. So what am I saying is, is that, see, th these things, once again, is contracted in the spirit realm now. That when we cannot use God's credit for what is worth and for what it's for, Come on, God will give us over. The Bible says, come on, I know what the Bible says. He'll give us over to a reprobated mind. And Saul has been turned over to a reprobated mind now. Because an evil spirit, anytime we have evil thoughts, one for another. That's a reprobated mind. Anytime you can feel good about doing evil to God's children, that's an evil mind. That's an evil spirit. And these things hit the church. They hit the church. They hit the church. 
He because the Bible says that he was so angry that when, when, when David was playing the harp that he had a spear in his hand and he threw it at him. He said, I'm going to take sand. I'm going to pin him to the wall. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kill him. He wasn't trying to hurt him. He was trying to kill him. We, we got too many saints now or believers now that are trying to hurt one another by putting mouth on them. Come on. By wishing bad for them. Oh, they're not this, they're not that. And this is where the spirit, come on, of the devil when it comes in. This is where the spirit of the devil comes in. But you got to be careful because of these things. What the spirit, what one of the spirits that the enemy loves to bring in is doubt. Love to bring in doubt. The Bible, amen, said because Saul, once again, he, he was afraid of David from that night forth because once again, he knew that God was with him. So therefore, once again, when you know that right there, doubt sets in the enemy will set doubt in. That's one of the spirits that the enemy sets in is doubt. And we have to be able now, once again, to understand that this is the spirit that has hit the church. I know the pandemic that happened. I know folks done lost their jobs. I know folks that men went through some things and we've seen some, some, some things happen. But this is what, once again, has come into the church doubt. Because now we got saints that are making their own decisions. They're making their own decisions now. And they're not standing on God's word. And all of a sudden now they begin to start doubting. That's a spirit of the devil. Let's pray against that spirit of doubt. That God won't fool you. The enemy will, amen, will have you to start doubting. But that's why the prayer now is, the, come on, the prayer lives of God's people become that much more, come on, necessary now because of the prayer life. Oh, this is what happens, amen. Saul stops praying. I want to ask, have you stopped praying? Have you stopped praying? No, I, I, I didn't stop praying. But how effective now is your prayer? Because do, do your prayer, amen, uh, uh, does it make sure that when you're praying and asking God, are you still in rage? Are you still in anger? Are you still in bitterness? Are you dull? Because when you begin, amen, when you begin to look at the story, Saul King Saul doesn't have a prayer life. That's why these, these spirits are easily attracted to him because he doesn't have a prayer life. This is one of the spirits because doubt sets in. Doubt sets in. Remember, with the Amalekites, it wasn't just with David, with the Amalekites, so doubt sets in. When doubt sets in, Oh, God told me to destroy all this other stuff. Oh, but I'm going to hold back because, you know, I can sacrifice unto the God. See, when doubt sets in, oh, it'll hold back things that we should have been sacrificing, that things that we should have been killing, things that we should have been coming against, things that we should have been offering up before God. Come on, somebody. When doubt sets in. Oh, oh, when doubt sets in, oh, Sam is not going to make it on time. And I, and I need to make sure that I make a sacrifice before we go into battle. See, when doubt sets in, We'll begin to start doing things on our own. Oh, they're not anointed. Oh, they're not. That, that, that's when doubt sets in. But that's a trick of the devil. Huh? Because Saul, once again, become arrogant. When arrogance sets in, oh, it's going to do some damage. It's going to do some damage. Saul doesn't have no gentleness. He doesn't have no peace. He, and when you don't got no peace, you got, come on. When you don't got no peace, the enemy can use that thing. When you don't have no joy, when you don't have, amen, no patience, when you don't have no self-control. Saul don't got no self-control. Why? Because this spirit has come upon him. So now he's beginning to become, once again, more dangerous now. And what, what happens is, he allow, th th this is why we got to be careful. That's why we're missing our miracles. Come on, we're missing our blessing. Is because why? We let, all of a sudden, we let doubt set in. Come on, we're letting doubt set in. Oh, don't, 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 don't get it fooled, believers. Amen. Don't let doubt set in. That's the spirit that the enemy wants to send in now. Because you're doubting. When Saul, amen, allowed these things to come in, he's doubting God. And the enemy is using it now. Another spirit that he allows, amen, to set in now, once again, he let doubt set in and deceit. You gotta be careful. The enemy is what the Bible says, a deceiver. 
he's a deceiver. He's believing now. Come on. He's believing now all of his victories. He's believing his position. He's believing his money. He's believing everything was by him. He don't give God credit for nothing. He don't give God credit for anything. And that's why the enemy, once again, will deceive us to hold back once again as, as if, once again, God can't allow somebody else to bless his, his house, his church. And we'll become, amen, once again, we'll, be, we'll get deceived by God, by, by the enemy, excuse me, and say, oh, God, God knows what I'm doing. God knows I'm holding because I got to make sure. But you got to learn that once again, that's a spirit that hits the church. That's the spirit that hits believers. The spirit of doubt. Come on. The spirit of what? Of deception. Come on. And that's the reason why, come on, you, 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 you get divided from the word of God. Got to watch these spirits that's coming in. This arrogant spirit of the enemy is coming into the church. It's been in the church, but it's affecting God's people. And what's going to do is disqualifying us. That's why we can't get what we want. Because why? The credit score is too low in God. Come on, somebody say that. Somebody write that down. Maybe because the credit score is too low in God. Huh? God is still looking today for praises and worshipers. He's still looking for what? For those that were are after God's own heart. God will give you a credit that you ain't never had before. God will make sure that you have things that you ain't never had before. If you, amen, stand in God, you'll have a good credit score. You'll have a wonderful credit score. Oh, God, I mean, I don't care how bad it looks, amen, in the world. But guess what, amen? God says, amen, no good thing will I withhold. For those that love me. Oh, I know when I get it. Oh, I'm going to be a blessing. I'm going to make sure. But you got to have a good credit score with God. By learning. who God. By not how to what? How to be deceived by what? By the devil. He's a liar. The Bible says in according to John 8 and 44. Once again, Jesus tells them, ye are of your father, the devil. He's a liar. Come on, he's a liar. He'll try to lie to you. Amen. And deceive you. Amen. And get you to doubt God. And these things is what comes on King Saul. And we don't want to look, amen, at, 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 at one another. We don't want to look at the church, but we got to make sure that this spirit that has been released, come on, that has been released now, oh God, by what? By the enemy. Don't come against us. That's why we can't be divided. We can't be divided. But when we are divided from God's word, the enemy uses that thing. To destroy God's people. Come on. He destroys God's people. These are the spirits. Oh, I know. I keep telling you. We keep dealing with everything. Oh, they're the devil. Oh, they, they, they don't know. They ain't doing God's work. Come on. The spirit now. The Bible says try every spirit by the spirit. That's what the Bible says. Come on. The spirit, once again, that Saul had on him was hatred. Can you imagine? God's servant had hatred on him. Come on. God's servant now, once again, okay, once again, what? Well, there's a discord. There's a discord. There's a disconnect. And the enemy now is using this thing for Saul to go after David. When we as children of God go after one another, he's jealous. Oh, the jealousy. My God, the jealousy. When we, amen, find out these things, these, this, this is the spirit of the enemy, and we're going again. He's jealous. Because they're saying David killed his ten thousands and Saul his thousand. I wouldn't care once again, whatever it is, amen, that God has put in your hand to do. Do it by the will of God and by the grace of God. And understand that God only gave us that credit. Once again, according to his will, not our own. But both, they, they have to understand that this is where, once again, these are the spirits that attack the, the children of God. and come against, amen, the children of God. They get mad at Moses. Oh, Moses think he better than somebody. Oh, Moses is thinking too much of himself. This is Moses' aunt, brother and sister that comes against them. When brothers and sisters come against one another, look at what happens. Come on. Our credit score, I keep telling you, it goes down. It don't go up. It goes down. It goes down. Miriam's credit score got so bad she got leprosy. Come on, somebody. Come on. See, there's a difference when you go from anger to rage. Huh? That God, once again, comes in the midst of this confrontation. Church, don't believe that God. Don't, don't believe that God's going to stay out of this confrontation very long. 
Come on, somebody. He's going to wait for us to try to get together. Come on. Because God going to come in. God going to come in. And when God comes in, whoo, God, help us here. Because why? The spirit of the enemy has been sent into the churches. When I say church, I'm not talking about geographical. I'm not talking about nobody's local church. I'm talking about the hearts of, of, what, of God's people. Saul, once again, has had, see, you can see people blessed and still not happy. Saul is the king and he's still not happy. Saul is in charge and he's still, you can see people that, that are still not happy. Look like they got everything and still not happy. Why? Because the spirit of the enemy has been set in. So we can't even be gracious now to the things that God has done. But we got to pray against the spirit of what? Of doubt, come on. Of deceit, come on. Of what? Of discouragement, of division. These are the spirits of the enemy, not of God. The spirit of arrogance is there. David, amen, is doing as a servant. Servant is going to have a good credit with God. Come on, servant is going to have a good credit. But here comes King Saul. And he allows the devil, come on, to release spirits in him, come on, from what? From times past. We're thinking that we're just getting it back now. There are things that if we don't kill, my God, when God tells us to kill it, God told him to kill it. And when we don't kill these things, the devil, once again, is going to, is going to allow that thing to lay inside of us like an egg until it hatches. That's what the devil want to do. He want to lay eggs inside. Come on, the body of Christ. Come on, I, I don't care what y'all say. He's going to lay. He's going to try to lay some things until that thing get incubated. Why? And our and our what? Our anger, and then our rage, and then allow that thing to hatch. And this thing, all of a sudden now, is taking place because he's been looking at David for a very long time. Come on, you read it in your Bible, and you see he's been looking at David, huh? And because he's been seeing the favor of David. That God has on David's life. He's angry. And guess what? It just took one thing to set it off. When them ladies started singing and saying what they said, it set it off. The Bible says it meant that that spirit came on him. Believers, tonight, we got to make sure that we pray against, once again, these spirits of the enemy. Come on, the spirit of God is love and joy and peace. Come on, long suffering, forgiveness. Come on, uh, not 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 having, Amen. Once again, the the ability to not allow the enemy, or have, excuse me, the ability to not have the enemy to take over. And and do what? And and pour once again his indignation inside of us. This spirit now has been transferred. And I believe that because, once again, we've been in post-pandemic. Come on. But, but they said everything's opening back up. We got to go, go back and open back up to God. We don't want to have the spirit of arrogance. Oh, I'm not going there no more. I'm not doing it. I'm going to do what I want to do. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Saul doesn't have the prayer life. And if he does, he don't got a right prayer life. His prayer life is not right in God. His prayer life is not right. Why? Because he's allowed doubt to set in. Arrogance to set in, come on, deceit to set in. He's allowed, amen, what, division to set in, to go against God's word. This is where we need to go back now to God and pray. Because why? I know years ago, once again, the church I came up in, and I know for some of us, amen, that are watching, that our parents, our church before, they talked about that devil. Now, we got to part with, with one another. Sister, but oh, they're not saved. Oh, they're not right. That, no, you better go after that devil. Come on, we, we better go after that devil. You better go after that devil. Woo! We better go after that devil. We better have the Holy Spirit. We better have discernment. Saul is dull. The Bible says, and I'm going to close on this. The Bible says, amen, according to Proverbs 27 and 17. Once again, iron sharpens iron. I've just been talking about that on the prayer line. Iron sharpens iron. You better learn, amen, that you better rub up against the word of God. Come on, and, and, and start getting better discernment. Come on, learn, amen, how to, amen, cut, cut through all that foolishness because there's a dull spirit now. There's not a, there's not a real spirit of worship. 
There's not a real spirit of praise. Come on. Everybody's got to be pushed by, by a good song or, or got to have a good preach and got to have a good. Listen, you better, amen, start getting up against the word of God. Come on. To where you have a joy and a peace in your heart and in your mind that I don't care if you don't sing like a mockingbird or not. You'll be able, amen, to still, amen, say, this is the day that the Lord has made and I'm, I rejoice and be glad in it. We got to get sharper now. You know, you can buy those expensive knives and say, listen, I paid over $300, 400 for these things. And they'll do what, they, what they're what they supposed to do. But on, amen, the device, there's a mechanism that when you put that knife inside there and start shopping, because after a while, it'll get it'll get dull. It'll, it'll get dull. Come on. Our joy will get dull. Our peace will get dull. These things will get, come on, they was happy. Oh, they was happy when they came out of, of, of Egypt land. But when they got to that wilderness, oh, they got dull. They got dull. They got dull. They got dull. And what? And, and what happened? The enemy was able to send in what? A spirit of doubt, of deceit, of deception, come on, of discouragement, and what? And ultimately, the vision. Ultimately, the vision, it divided them from the will of God for their life because they didn't recognize the spirit that was being released. I'm sharing it tonight in this Bible study that once again, we got to be careful about the spirit that's being released Woo. over God's people. And we got to come against that devil. Apostle Paul says it. He said what? There was a messenger Come on, a buffer, a message sent to me by what? By Satan. And Apostle Paul, I was trying to kill this thing. Huh? And I prayed about it. See, we ain't praying about it. Oh, God. We ain't praying about it. But he prayed about it. And he said, he heard the Lord say what? By grace is sufficient. I know what the enemy is trying to do. See, we got to stand sharp. Paul knew that this was not God's spirit. He knew that this was not the spirit of God. And he had to pray. Because he says what? A messenger was sent by Satan. He knew who it was because he tried the spirit by the spirit and knew it was not God. Oh, I know we want to make sure that, oh, we got we got all these things going on, all the prophecies that we've been hearing. But I'm telling you, you better be careful. The Bible says it. Read it in your Bible. The Bible says it. Let me get out of here. Amen. The, but the Bible says it. Come on, let me get my scripture. The Bible says, amen, this right here as we close. The Bible says this right here. On the next an evil spirit from God came up mighty on Saul. And what look what is it? And he prophesied in the middle of the house. And David played with his hand. And he did, and um, he did day by day. Saul had this spirit in his hand. Look at this right here. And on the next day, an evil spirit from God came mighty on Saul. And he prophesied. Listen, you can prophesy all you want. Oh God, that when you but, but listen, the devil will got false prophets that will go out here, okay? But when there is deceit, when there is doubt, when there is discouragement, when there's the vision, what Saul is prophesying in his own house, huh? Woo, but guess what? It didn't make not one bit of a difference. Because why? The enemy had already took over the house. The Bible says it, people of God. That a house divided against itself cannot stand. Even though he's prophesying over his house. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be the king forever. But the Bible says that a house divided against itself cannot stand. Huh? He's trying to prophesy over his house. But God had already stripped him. Square to square when it went down. I'm telling you tonight that when we believe God. Oh, God, our credit score goes up and stands on God's word. How do we believe him? By making sure that we identify the Bible to try to be spread by the spirit. The, the spirit of doubt, the spirit of deceit, the spirit of discouragement. Come on, the spirit of division against what? Against God's people and against God's word. When these things, when God tells you to kill something, my God, kill it. I done told us already, God accredited King Saul with something that he was not, once again, worthy to receive. And that's God's grace and mercy for us all. That when God accredits us another day, 
Come on, somebody, because some people it may, may not make it till tomorrow. But when God accredits you another day, that means you ought to kill something that you didn't kill the day before. You ought to kill something that you didn't kill the day before. Kill that hatred, that anger, that bitterness. Come on, that strife. Oh, kill that thing. And don't allow the enemy woo, to strip you of your blessings, of your credit, of your position in God. Because he'll send out these spirits that will literally deplete our account with God. And we'll find no more favor. Because the devil found no more favor. Come on, by God. And God stripped him. Read it in your Bible. When the enemy was found with iniquity and sin in him, the Bible says God stripped him of all of his Jews. Because the Bible says, amen, he had all the Jews, the kabunkle, the onyx, you know what I'm saying, the diamond, the sword, everything was his covering. But when God found iniquity in him, God stripped him of it. That's why people are going to get stripped. Because why? Because when God finds the iniquity in us, our credit score goes back. And guess what God does? God will repossess everything. Come on. He'll take, make sure they repossess everything. But when we hear God's word, God says, I'm going to give back to you the things that what? The canker worm, the palmer worm, and a caterpillar has, what? has eaten away. But watch those spirits of the devil. Watch those spirits of the devil. And get it back. Get it back. Get it back. And stand on God's word. These are the things that are attacking believers. That they won't, amen, believe God. But our credit score will go up when we do believe him. Let's pray. Father, tonight we thank you for your word, for your power for your might. God, we're praying tonight, Father, that any spirit that has been sent out, God, by the devil, God, we are learning, Lord God, to pray against these spirits now, that no evil spirit come upon us on tonight. Help us tonight, God. Those that are in doubting, God, cast it off of them now. We rebuke it off of them now. Those that are in deceit, Lord God, Cast it off of them now in the name of Jesus. Those that are in the vision, Lord God, that will cause the vision among the brethren. Cast it off of them tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. Those, Father God, that can't, Lord God, have self-control on tonight, Lord God, cast it off of them tonight. Because these are spirits of the devil. Father, whatever the devil has come up against us with, Lord God, you said that when he comes in like a flood, you'll lift up a standard. Tonight, Father, we're praying for your standard tonight. God Work on the hearts and minds of your people. Thank you for the credit that you've given us that we didn't deserve. That, Father God, that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten son. And God, whoever believed, Lord God, did not perish, but had everlasting life. Father, you gave us credit. And we thank you tonight, Lord God, that God, that where our credit scores are at, Lord God. Father God, we want to be, Lord God, at the high top tier. God, we ask on tonight that anything that's not like you and us, God, get it out of us now. That Father will have fine favor. Make us to be servants to you and not to that of the devil. Thank you, God, that we will not serve this flesh and we will not serve the devil. We will not serve the enemy. Every demon, we draw it out right now. Every deceptive spirit, God, that has been sent out, Lord God, to deceive your children tonight. God, deliver us on tonight. Touch our children, young and old, on tonight, Lord God. Bless your people only as you can. And Father, we'll forever give you praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We have to forgive and believe God. Stand on God's word. Go back to gentleness and kindness one for another. Pray for one another. Believe God, amen, that our credit scores are going to go up as we become servants to the Lord. We thank God. Listen, tonight, amen, I believe the Lord. And I thank God for you that have joined us on tonight. Bless you. Thank you tonight that have joined us on tonight. I believe God's going to send a blessing your way. Believe him. Your credit scores, amen, is going up in God. I believe God. 
Listen to that. I want to ask that you would be a blessing tonight and sow seed tonight. Yeah, you got to sow seed. You got to sow seed so your credit score can stay where God wants it to be at. Amen to him. The Bible simply tells us, amen, that when we believe God to give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, God is going to continue to bless us. So tonight, we you know it's our Wednesday night and we just ask, amen, that you would just be a blessing. Those, amen, that can sow, amen, anything in, amen, in denominations of seven. I believe God, amen. I'm standing on God's word. Those that can sow, amen, between seven and 14 and 21 dollars. I'm not going no further than that. Come on, seven, 14, 21 dollars. Believe God. Believe God. Don't let the spirit of deception come into it that God can't supply all your needs according to his riches and glory, which is in Christ Jesus. Don't believe that God, amen, will fool you and try to trick you. God's got a credit, once again, with your name on it. And he'll extend your blessings if you, amen, learn how to bless God, amen, in your giving. Between 7 and 14 and 21 dollars. Come on. I, I, I just want to, amen, share the cash app is, once again, it's dollar sign worship cc5 dollar sign worship cc5 and come on our zell is once again this worship christian center cc dot pjr at gmail.com once again that's worship christian center that's worship excuse me worship christian worship cc excuse me worship cc okay dot pjr at gmail.com worship cc dot pjr at gmail.com worship cc worshipcc.pjr at gmail.com and our paypal once again is worship christian center i was getting mixed up excuse me worship christian center dot org come on be a blessing so into god's work i believe god i'm standing on god's word i'm not getting discouraged i've been reading my bibles praying and god amen is saying it's all for my glory it's all for my glory. I thank God for everything that God is doing. Come on. I know we got bills at the church. One more, we got financing, amen, uh, uh, responsibilities. And when you sow into God's word, I promise you, you're going to have, once again, more credit than what you think. God's going to supply your needs according to, once again, his riches and glory. Be a blessing. Sow into the kingdom. Sow into God's word. We thank God, once again, for what God is doing. I'm excited about God. I'm praying for you. Pray for me. We love you tonight. Amen. We love you tonight. Amen. We stand on God's word for you tonight. Listen, our prayer line, go, go, go online and see our prayer line. Come on the prayer line with us. Amen. We pray every day at 12 noon and then we pray at 7 p.m. at night. We need prayer. Once again, why? So that these spirits of doubt and deceit come on and discouragement and division in God's amen plan for our life. Amen. Once again, is not discredited. Because God didn't forget David. David's worship and his servitude, come on, increased his credit score. He didn't even know where he was at. He was at the top tier. God put him in the kingdom. Come on, in the palace as the king. God's got a blessing with your name on it. I believe, I believe him. The spirit of the devil has been sent out to try to deceive God's people. But I believe God tonight. That once again, that God's going to restore us and give us what we need in the right season. Your promotion is coming. Your blessing is coming. Be a blessing. So we thank God for you. We love you. God bless you. Amen. Enjoy your night. Thank you for all that has joined with us on tonight. Amen. God bless you. Good night.